Hey guys, this is Danny and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at our systems across the basin. We have two disturbances and we also have a system affecting the Caribbean, a cold front that is going to induce some inclement weather across some sections of the region. And so before I go into details... <music> Alright, so let us go ahead and talk about our two disturbances first. So first up is that one that is highlighted in orange. And so as of right now, the formation chance is at a medium 60% for this to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone or subtropical cyclone during the next couple of days. So probably by later this weekend going into the early part of the new week, we could have this acquiring more subtropical characteristics and could eventually become a named cyclone. And if it does become a named system it will acquire the name wanda which is the final name to be used for this hurricane season so so far october has been really unusually quiet we've not had a single storm develop in the month but there is that slight chance that maybe tomorrow we could have this however if we do not have any development tomorrow then october would officially be one of the quietest months of this hurricane season i believe the other was july where we barely had any development development at all taking place and so now let's go ahead and take a look at our next disturbance and so this one here is given a low 20% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next couple of days so it really has limited time because by the midweek conditions are forecast to get less favorable in terms of the ocean waters and there's also some Saharan dust that is going to help to inhibit all that convection from developing so we'll take a look at this Saharan dust map very soon and so Fortunately, it doesn't seem as though this is going to be making its way continually westward to say it might be a threat to the Caribbean. It is expected to make its way mainly to the northwest during the next couple of days and it's likely to stay out there. So the only area that might feel some impacts from the system in terms of the shower and thunderstorm activity is the Cabo Verde Island. So that small archipelago is likely to potentially experience some inclement weather as the system is going to be making its way by. So if we have no development by the midweek, then it isn't likely that we will have any at all afterwards due to the unfavorable conditions that are expected to be in the vicinity of the system at that time. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery of our first disturbance. So this one here is actually designated as invest 94 l so here we have it on satellite and we don't necessarily see in a lot of organization with the system and so here we have it on a wider satellite view of there it is associated with that frontal system and then look to the southwest of it there we have a frontal system making its way into the caribbean so it entered the basin yesterday and it is making its way to the southeast and so this is going to be inducing inclement weather conditions while well, it is inducing those conditions in portions of the caribbean such as cuba the cayman islands or uh, the bahamas are likely being impacted as well as well as portions of central america so throughout today and the early part of the new week the system is going to be making its way more to the southeast and it's going to affect other areas such as Jamaica, the Turks and Caicos Islands, and potentially Hispaniola as well. So if you're in any of those regions, you want to be prepared for some inclement weather conditions. This might be a big cool down for some areas, which a lot of persons might be really happy for because it's been quite hot and not much has been there across the Caribbean. So this might be really helpful in terms of the temperatures and so now let's go ahead and take a look at the conditions so first up is the ocean temperature map and so we're seeing here that things are pretty warm across the caribbean so it's really the warmest part of the atlantic basin right now in that little section just off africa so those warm ocean waters of africa will be what aid in maybe some development of the disturbance that is located in that region and as it is going to be making its way more to the northwest then it is going to encounter all those cooler waters whereas in the caribbean things are pretty warm but in the gulf of mexico the northern portion of the gulf especially of the u.s gulf coast states is getting very cool and this hurricane season is coming to a close in just a matter of weeks not to say that development is not possible thereafter we've had a lot of off-season systems 
in the month of December or between the months of January and May. So we really have to wait and see what's going to be the eventual outcome. But as conditions get increasingly unfavorable when the season is closing, then it is not really likely that we will have any significant development of any cyclone. And so now let's move on and take a look at the Saharan dust map. And so we're seeing here that we have quite a bit of Saharan dust making its way a bit to the west. Uh, portions of the eastern and central Caribbean are being impacted. So Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, uh, the Virgin Islands, as well as the Lesser Antilles are being impacted by the Saharan dust. It is not a very dense plume. However, it is exactly helping to limit showers and thunderstorm activity because it is dry air, which inhibits moisture. And thunderstorms and showers are dependent on moisture. So without a lot of that, then there will be limited amounts in those regions. And as for the tropical disturbance that is located off Africa, once it is going to be accelerating into that hostile environment, then of course development is going to be increasingly unlikely for this. And so finally, let's take a look at the wind shear map. So we have the different colors here that indicate the favorability of the shear in terms of tropical cyclone or thunderstorm development. And so we have the green that means favorable, the yellow means neutral, and the red means unfavorable. And so we have some spots of the Caribbean, especially the Central Caribbean, being in a region of favorable and neutral shear and so with this cold front making its way down and this favorable shear here then we have a little window of opportunity for more thunderstorms to develop in association with that frontal system because we know uh, those that strong wind shear is what really rip up thunderstorms associated with systems but once we don't have a lot interfering then that would open a small window of opportunity for us to have some shower and thunderstorm development keeping in mind that other conditions stay favorable, such as the Saharan dust. So if we have no Saharan dust intrusion, uh, there are warm ocean waters and the wind shear is favorable, then we will definitely have some thunderstorm development at least. And so guys, that is really it for this updated video on the tropics. So again, we have those two disturbances in Vest 94L and that disturbance that is located off Africa. So 94L probably becomes a subtropical system during the next couple of days or so and then we have that disturbance of africa which is given very limited time to develop as a result of the unfavorable conditions ahead of it and we have that frontal system which is going to be affecting portions of the caribbean as well as the bahamas and central america during the next couple of days and so of course i will keep you updated on the latest in the tropics as time goes by and if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And just remember to always be with wise.